morning, happy weekend. We just got back from our little morning walk with Bobby. Such a beautiful day. The walks this past week have really felt like it's spring summer now. Um, let me know if you're experiencing the same where you live that like the last couple of weeks has just felt like the change in the seasons is happening. I know lots of you probably live in lovely hot countries and that's been the case for a while now, but in the UK it's like, oh, it's so refreshing. You go outside, it's sunny and I was saying to Alex, cause I made myself a um, iced coffee and I was, it was swirling around. I put a bit of vanilla syrup in there and it just tasted like holiday being in the sun and it being really quiet. And you could just hear some birds and the sun was on our faces and it was just lovely. We are having some sausage sandwiches for breakfast. This is the Plant Kitchen Bangers. I love these ones. If you want to get some really good vegan um, bangers or sausages, then my favourites are M&S, Sainsbury's Shroom Dogs, and then the Richmond ones. These ones are more like, I need to put them in because this oil is heating up. These ones and the Sainsbury's ones are more like your proper uh, sausage sausage, like the more authentic artisanal sausages. Whereas the Richmond ones are kind of like the, I don't know how to describe them, the very salty kind of sausages you'd have as a kid, like if you're at a pub and you had like sausage and chips, that's the kind of vibe. Or maybe even like a, from a chip shop. Both are great. I made a loaf of bread the other day and hopefully it's still fresh, let's look. I made it on, I made it on Wednesday and it's Saturday now. So I think what I might do is put it on a baking tray and chuck it in the agar in a minute with a bit of water. It's still quite soft, um, just to make it a bit warm. And today the plan is to do some gardening this morning until we go to St Ives Food Festival because the festival is on this weekend. I think it started yesterday. I remember going last year and it was great. I think we're gonna try and go in the sea as well. I'm gonna bring my swimming costume. We were planning on going in the sea yesterday and we didn't end up doing it because we just felt a bit tired. So we're gonna have lots of yummy food. So I'm gonna load up on a nice big breakfast because we're not gonna eat until the festival and I think we're going at like two or three. But yeah, I'm gonna try and do some gardening. One of you mentioned about our trees, like blocking out a lot of the shade for the veg beds and it's made me paranoid that I need to trim the trees because we have a lot of trees where we live and there's the apple trees on one side and then there's trees like as in a hedge but to our neighbors on the other side. And because our garden is quite narrow, I suppose, we don't get the sun because we've got trees on our um, on the road that leads to our house. And then the trees will see uh, the barrier between our garden and our neighbor's garden. So we don't have like that full sun. So now I'm paranoid that our plants aren't gonna grow because they don't have that sun. So I might try trimming them today or if not tomorrow, I know it's not like an urgent thing. Um, but I'm going to get out in the garden and just weed. And Alex, I think, is going to go to the garden centre to get some more of the, the long mesh covers because we've got the ones that cover the whole bed, but they're squishing the plants a bit. I have propped them up with some, like, twigs, but the ones on the edges, because they're not big enough, they are kind of... I just want to get the other the sort of tube ones because they seem to be a bit better and give them more space. So that's the plan. It's gonna be a lovely weekend and I'm gonna take you along this weekend. So it's gonna be lots of gardening, exploring, relaxing, cleaning, sorting, just a dreamy weekend. And my weekends have been so much better recently because we're sticking to our routine from the week at the weekends rather than like lying in bed and not knowing what we're doing. We're trying to get up, do as usual, walk Roxy, get going with our day. And instead of getting going with work, we get going with just things we like doing. So that's the plan and I cannot wait for these sausages. <laughs> PR things. I thought this was my, um, I made an order with ProCook and I thought that's what that was. But this, I think, is from Whitley Neal. So I will show you. Look how cute this little picnic basket is. I'm going to use this for loads of stuff. But I'm working with Whitney, Whitley Neal on a campaign. This summer, they've sent me some goodies. I thought it was ProCook, but I it's the Whitley Neal. I think the basket's right. They bring it back. 
So we have raspberry gin. Oh, this just makes me excited for summer. I'm honestly so excited for summer. I just turned them, leave them. Oh, these are difficult to open. And then we have rhubarb and ginger alcohol free. I'm really excited to try this. Inspired by the glory of the English country garden, essence of rhubarb adds a tart crisp edge with ginger, while, whilst ginger warms the palate. Sounds utterly delicious. Um, <laughs> and I actually really love having alcohol, alcohol free spirits because, you know, at the end of a long day, if it's sunny outside, it's quite nice to have a drink but not always to be drinking alcohol. So I think it's great if you're someone who does drink to sometimes have that option. And then we've got, I think, a lovely glass, a gin glass. Does that a goblet? It does. Oh, look at this. This oh, is wow. beautiful. Nice. Look at this beautiful glass with Whitney Neal on the front, but look at the crystal design. Thank you so much for this. I love this picnic basket. Oh look, they've got the nice um, little um, metal ice cubes. So you put these in the freezer, we've got some already. And they don't dilute your drink, but they make your drink cold. So that is very, very exciting. Um, we're gonna shoot the campaign, I think at the beach. So I'm looking forward to doing that. And I also got this package from Gaia's Farming Co. Hemp and peanut butter quite nice because it's got hemp in it as well um, and hemp and almond butter so I'm very excited to try these because hemp is so good for you and they also sent me Alex is probably gonna devour before I get a chance their hemp and cocoa chocolate milk which sounds delicious so thank you so much for sending these they're all plant-based so I'm excited to try them and I think the sausages are nearly ready ah. wow Let's get this bread out. Hopefully it will have softened it nicely. Yeah, it feels like a fresh loaf. Yum. Oh my God, it's so nice and crusty. This is my favorite vegan butter for anyone wondering, Natalie. I love the block of this and the spreadable. It's just delicious. And I feel like it's, cause it's organic, it's got less, it's less like margarine, which probably sometimes doesn't have the best ingredients. I also use um, like flora and stuff because that's most readily available, which I do like as well. And Vitalite, but they're probably not as healthy for you. Hopefully the sausage is ready. Yummy! How many sausages do you want? I should cut them in half. Do you want them cut in half or should I just chuck them in all big? Uh, I'm in a big one. Same. Well, let's just do three. <laughs> I'm going to eat the whole packet. We run out of HP sauce. We need to get some. Do you want a HP sauce? I thought. No. I was just. Sausages is ketchup, is it not? It's both. Look at that. Gosh. What a treat. Ten out of ten. We've got our Green Chef delivery yesterday. So I will show you what we have on the menu this week. We have a fishless pie, which I'm very excited for. Butter beans, peas, and capers. That looks delicious. We have crispy sage and king oyster mushroom risotto. Wow. I forgot I'd ordered that one. That looks so good. <gasps> oh, I think I might have that one tonight. And then this isn't chicken, Sri Lankan inspired curry. You know how much I love this isn't chicken. So I'll put on screen my discount code for Green Chef and what it entails, because it does change, because I've been working with them for a while now. It does change depending on what offer they've got on, but they usually give me really great offers to give you guys. I recommend Green Chef so much because I use it so much. It makes my life very easy and it does simplify the meal prep plan. 
and I've never eaten anything that hasn't been utterly delicious from them. It also inspires me in my own recipe creation. So yeah, really recommend it. And it should get you like, I think it should get you a discount on your first box and then your next box is after that if you subscribe. So it's a really great offer and you can try it out then and see if it's for you. But I'll show you later. Cooking that for dinner. It comes like this as well, it's quite good. You can recycle everything. Alex has already put the fridge stuff in the fridge. Oh, here's the oyster mushrooms, this needs to go in the fridge. I'm gonna put this all away actually. So top tip for mushrooms, always take the plastic covering off because that stops it from getting moldy. believe I'm saying this but it's so hot I don't think I can carry on gardening I was doing it in slow motion because it's so hot it's midday so it's probably literally the worst time to do it um I've learned my lesson so for tomorrow I'm definitely going to start early <laughs> so I'm gonna try and walk Roxy first thing and then just garden in the morning and then garden like later before dinner because it's supposed to be nice weather tomorrow as well. But um, yeah, it's midday. I think we're going at like three-ish. So I've planted some flowers um, and it's quite fun like figuring out everything and learning everything. I think something that some of you have pointed out is that what probably the biggest mistake or learning curve, let's put it, that I will learn from this year is that when I started, I just went ahead all guns blazing as usual per my personality and planted everything from all the seed packets I bought. Ended up with a lot of seedlings all at once. So I've planted out lots of Brussels sprouts, broccoli, um, cabbage, lettuce, carrots, onions, garlic, like spinach, rocket, sugar snap peas, like everything. And I think potentially what's gonna happen is I'm gonna end up with a lot of produce all in one go. Um, because I planted, I, I think I said this in the previous video that I got the seed packet and I thought, oh, I got to plant all these because it's in one seed packet. So um, that's the thing I think I'm gonna learn, but it's great because I can share it with my family, with my neighbors and just share the love of the food that I've grown. And now I feel like I've, I've finished planting into the beds, which was something that I wanted to complete. Um, I've left two beds at the bottom because I, I know that there's quite a lot of vegetables that will need spacing out. So I, the ones that I've sown directly outside, like the spinach and the rocket, and there's some cabbage and some other things, I just chucked the seed packets in kind of lazily and they're very, they're already coming up very bunched together. I planted way too many, it said so thinly, I definitely didn't. So I'm gonna have to separate those out and that will mean separate, I, I've saved two beds at the bottom. My original plan was to have like two, like four cut flower beds but just because of how densely I have sown some of the vegetables, I have now decided to do two cut flower beds, which is plenty. Um, and I've got, the thing is, because I'm now thinking about the fact that obviously you want to sow them in different periods. Um, when some of those flowers grow and I cut them back, I can plant some more because lots of the uh, packets, they say that you can plant them at different times of year to get different flowering. So, yeah, it's all a learning curve and obviously I don't have a greenhouse so that's part of it. I can't like psychically be sowing in a lovely greenhouse um, where I've got all my pots set up and my soil. I'm having to do it in my utility room which is a bit messy. I mean I'm so grateful I've got like the most incredible vegetable garden and I've got a utility room to do it in and I've been doing it on my windowsills but it's not ideal long term like it was something that I did to start with but I don't particularly want to do that again because it makes the windowsills and the utility room really messy. <laughs> and then doing it on the kitchen table and stuff. Like it's fine, it doesn't bother me, it's quite fun. But likelihood is I'm not sure I want to do that really again. So um, 
yeah, that's the first sort of learning thing that I think will be the most prominent. But I said that, I said that to Alex and bless him. He's so supportive of me. And I was like, oh, I've sewn everything all at the same time. We're gonna have loads of produce all at once and then nothing. And he was like, yeah, but you're just gonna, you're gonna have loads of amazing food. So what's the problem? You've done amazingly, you've planted out so much. So I thought, yeah, that's the attitude because you can't be perfect at stuff when you start it. And stuff that seems very obvious isn't when you're a beginner because you're thinking of hundreds of things at once and the obvious stuff gets missed so like the hindsight is key <laughs> so it's quite nice to do this and to learn that um it's it's like anything in life so it's a really nice experience so i'm going to stop gardening now because i'm boiling um i do want to trim the trees back so i think my main goal tomorrow because i've planted everything i want to plant in the in the veg beds for now i think i you know, I'm saying I don't have a greenhouse and I'm not going to do it inside again. I think that I'll probably get another sort of burst of energy, maybe June, July, for some winter vegetables or stuff that you can plant at that time of year. Um, and I'll... I feel like I really want to plant some courgettes and some squash. So whether I find space for that. But if, like, some of the vegetables um, die off or we use them all, then, yeah. I'll see. I'll see how I go. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, tomorrow I'm going to try and trim the trees back. And Alex has just gone to the garden centre to get some different polytunnel things, like mesh covers, because I said the ones are squishing them a bit. So I could replace those tomorrow as well. Um, and just do some like little bits of weeding here and there. But fingers crossed when I get my SIM card finally, because I still am without a SIM card. It's been That's been the most annoying thing actually about losing my phone and having my phone stolen, is that I've had a week without a SIM card, which means when I'm out and about, I can't use my phone. It's been a bit tricky. So when I get my SIM card back, I'm going to text the um, landscapers we were in contact with about them coming, because I think they were on another job. So they can come and we can kind of, I, I just want them to provide, I've said this so many times, I just want them to provide a drawing for me of the front and the back, like a plan with, um, you know, ideas for what we can plant and get them to do that so we can have a long-term goal. So I know what I'm doing um, and potentially I want them to fix the uh, fruit cage and then we can put in place plans to sort out the veg beds and do a greenhouse maybe next uh, like winter, like early winter new in the new year before I start planting. And then I, I know those things take a long time to order like greenhouses. So that's what I would like to do. But I'm going to probably have a cup of tea. I don't know, what am I gonna do now? I don't need to show you. I'm gonna have a cup of tea and a shortbread. Look, look what I made the other day. I made these beautiful lemon shortbreads. Look how delicious they are. They're so easy as well. I also made focaccia under here. So I think this is gonna kind of be my snack before we go to the food festival. I'll have maybe this and a cup of tea and a piece of focaccia. I can shower and get myself feeling nice. I'm not gonna wash my hair though because we're gonna go in the sea so my hair's probably gonna get wet. Um, but I'm gonna tidy because it's a bit messy inside. So I'll tidy inside, give up on the gardening today. It's too hot. Too, too hot. Um, and maybe watch a bit of Marin at first sight because I've got the reunion to watch, so that'll be fun. very greasy but I didn't want to wash it because I might go and see and so I I French platted it I haven't French platted my hair in so long and it took forever I feel like if I start doing this more it will get a little bit easier I'm trying to loosen it a bit so these pieces don't look so small because while I have a lot of hair I don't actually have thick hair I have very fine hair but I have a lot of hair. That's a positive in some ways. Oh gosh, I'm such a perfectionist. I hate that it's slightly different on both sides. Like this side is sticking out more and this side's more more like close to my ear. So like um, the position, oh, I can't look at it for too long because the position of the plaits. 
are in different places this has gone more backwards and this is more like close to my face literally no one cares um <laughs> yeah my hair is actually very fine oh it's not very fine it's fine but I have a lot of hair so when I plait it when I put it in ponytails it can look quite small like this looks like I don't have much hair but I do have I do have a lot of hair so I don't love putting my hair in plaits also my layers are coming out it might be also because I have a lot of layers that by the time I plait it there's not much left that's probably mainly anyway I put my dress on I'm not sure if I'm gonna wear this I don't know if it goes do I look silly I don't know all these pieces coming out are annoying me I don't know what do we think I think it looks nice I was gonna wear my maxi dress black one from linen fox but I thought that was a bit boring maybe if I, let's try it on and, I'll, and maybe you can tell me which you prefer so this is the maxi dress I just feel like this is a bit much for spring it's like May early May it looks a bit cooler though I worry the blue is a bit much with my my pigtails it's kind of a bit I don't feel like myself oh my god the plaits are really winding me up because they're so different why is that annoying me so much why did I do them so differently? Oh well. I feel like I prefer this outfit. And then I can wear my black denim jacket. I feel like this looks a bit more cool. I feel like the blue looks better when your hair's down or like in a bun or something. Something about the pigtails and the floaty bright blue dress is a bit much it's a bit too girly i think because my style is not i love dresses i don't love looking too girly so let's decide on jewelry i think i'm gonna go for the same should i go for this either one to match i wear like black and black silver and gold together now a lot i think i'm gonna go for these I cannot get over how obsessed I am with my nails. The daisy nails. I just love them. So do we go for that? I've got to leave soon and I'm just like faffing around with my jewellery and outfits. Do you know I get so much enjoyment from this though? I love playing dress up. Reminds me of being a kid. And we should never lose that vitality in ourselves as we get older gold or silver I think the silver is more of a vibe these are my most worn earrings at the minute I swear I need to get some more I want to get some more like boho style jewellery because more recently I feel like a style that I haven't explored as much is like a bit more of a boho look and I feel like because I'm in Cornwall I mean maybe some of you think I'm being ridiculous Alex is probably editing this like Maddie what are you on about but I hope some of you get that like when you're like an artistic person don't you just kind of love treating yourself like a little bit of a doll and having like different identities and different styles and trying new things like I just find that very fun I don't think there's any shame in that and I've talked about how I think minimalism and sustainability tore that away from my personality a bit and it's such a part of my personality anyone who knows me growing up knows that that's a part of who I am because I've always dressed up and always played around with my style and like had fun with you know the, my, my best friend one of my best friends right who works with me now Ali who does all of my photography we have been taking pictures together like fashion pictures and having fun with it since we were like 15 maybe even 14 and even before that like when I used to have my space we would do photo shoots together and I just would love dressing up and we'd play like we just I, even before that when me and my sister were little we would like dress up and play around the the living room and I don't know I'm getting a bit deep about this but I've just always enjoyed it and I feel like I I don't think when you get older you should rip that away from you especially in the name of like minimalism or sustainability you still can have fun with your appearance and not be stuck in this 
box you can have fun and you can wear bright colors and you can wear different outfits and it's okay um, and I try and do it in a sustainable as sustainable of a way as I can I think I'm gonna put mascara on what am I because I'm gonna go in the sea no I'm not going to I'm gonna have sunglasses on um yeah so I'm like trying to experiment a bit and I think that I would like to get some more there was an account I found on Instagram and she looked so gorgeous and she had all these beautiful dresses and um kind of like very 70s inspired style and I know I mentioned like colour theory recently and lots of you said that I'm a winter which I definitely think I am like the high contrast um which is why I've been wearing more silver jewellery but another thing is the um kibby body types if you ever looked into this it's quite fun and I looked into it years ago I think I came across a youtuber I think her name's Alex but she does loads of videos about body types and I found it very fun kind of like those sort of quizzes you do when you're little in magazines and I think that I'm a flamboyant natural which is typical if you're quite tall, you're broader shouldered and you don't, you're not necessarily that like curvy in and out. Like I've got boobs and a bum, I've got hips and I've got all of that, but I'm quite straight up and down. So when I gain weight, I just, I don't have a, I don't really have a waist. And that's, I can think typical of a flamboyant natural body type. And that really suits a kind of boho vibe, loose fitting, uh, floaty, ethereal look. There's also another thing, isn't there, that I've seen recently on TikTok is like your essence. And what your essence is like people can have different essences but they have like a prominent one um i want to find out i want to try and look into what mine would be but i do think the whole boho floaty kind of 70s vibe hippie vibe when i wear those clothes i feel like they really look good on me rather than the kind of more tailored strict vibe anyway i'm i'm wanting to get like a, a float a few more boho -y dresses and um i really want to get a pair of really high-waisted flared jeans that are very 70s and some like floral sort of crop tops and maybe the reason I start talking about this is more boho kind of jewellery like hoop earrings and like longer necklaces and just experiment a bit because I'm still young and I should have fun with my style anyway let's go tidy up we've got well realistically I've got like 15 minutes um so I'm just gonna go do a quick tidy up and then we're gonna head to St Ives Food Festival and I'm not going to get annoyed about how different my hair is on each side <laughs> Harlan Roots stool. So he's got a vegetable box in Cornwall. So if you want a vegetable box subscription, definitely check him out because he has all this amazing um, produce that he grows like just down the road from us and he's amazing. So yeah, I'll leave a link so check him out. Um, but he's got an amazing stool here today with all of the veg. Look at this. All these lovely tomatoes, mushrooms, look at the mushrooms, pea shoots, asparagus artichoke mm, look at this
good afternoon. It is Sunday afternoon. This morning we well, we stayed last night at my sister sister's house because we watched Eurovision. I fell asleep on the sofa. What a travesty Eurovision was. I don't understand why the UK got such poor votes. And the winning, uh, I know Sweden, if you're Swedish watching this, it's not a negative thing against Sweden, but I really didn't like the, the performance that won. But it's always entertaining, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> um, we're back home. We walked the dogs at the farm and now we're back and I'm gonna do some tidying. Bobby has made her bed on the chair. Come on, lighting. It's not that dark. There you go. I've come home and the house feels horrifically dirty. I don't know how this happens. I think just living in a house like this when you have pets, because our patio is not done, it just takes a day or two of going outside in the garden and coming in inside. Like yesterday we did some gardening. So just a day of that means that our house gets so disgusting. And then I think we had a few deliveries. So there's like recycling. And the next thing you know, you look in your kitchen and you're like, in your hallway and you're thinking how does it look like I haven't cleaned in a week <laughs> it's a lot so I'm um, gonna put my headphones on and listen to some music there's actually music playing already and just do a big whoosh around the house clean everything and then I'll go outside before it starts to rain and I'm gonna change over the mesh coverings and put some signs because I think I finished planting I think I said this to you yesterday Oh, I haven't debriefed on St Ives Food Festival. St Ives Food Festival, I didn't love it, to be honest with you, this year, as a vegan. Um, there was just so few options. There was an amazing stall that did cauliflower tacos. They were really delicious. But other than that, I couldn't really, the food stalls that they had, I just didn't, I mean, I'm sure lots of them were Cornish businesses, but I didn't see like a lot of Cornish businesses or even companies that I recognised. Um, I just, I, in my head I was thinking, surely some of these people will be there, ones that I know of. I think that there was a vegan pizza on one of the stalls. I had, I ordered a kebab, and I had to go give it back because it, it was a kebab, but I thought it would be like vegan kebab meat, but it was just two sausages, and they were completely not cooked. They literally looked like they'd been boiled. So I literally went back and I was so, I'm so sorry, but I, I can't eat this because it's not cooked, um, which I felt horrendous doing. But other than that, I got chips and that was kind of it. There was a few places that did, there was a place that did noodles. We did get noodles actually, and they were fine, but it kind of just tasted like you're having, you know, like a, you know, a noodle takeaway, which is fine, but it wasn't, it was, a, it was like very expensive as well. Like everything like that, a kebab was 12 pounds. And I was like, how can you charge 12 quid for a kebab wrap with some uncooked sausage and then some salad. Like I don't, I don't get that. Um, so sorry to be negative about it, but yeah, it's one of the food festivals I probably wouldn't recommend if you are in Cornwall. I think the Porth Leven food festival from my memory, though I haven't been in a few years, but when I went a few years ago, cause this year, the weekend we went, I think was when we were at the wedding. Um, but when we went a few years back, it felt more like they had lots of l local um, stools and it felt a bit I feel like the St Ives Food Festival just feels a bit commercial because there was lots of the like there's like Aperol spritz and lots of different alcohol stools the um actually the inside tents had some amazing food stools of local companies which I thought was great so that if I think it's better to go there to do a bit of shopping to look at like you know um crafts and food companies or alcohol companies that you can buy like a jar of peanut butter or some brownies or some cakes or some um I don't know um like Hull and Roots that I was mentioning when we were there like to get some produce and to get local stuff like that rather than the actual cooked food stalls I didn't rate those but the actual the drinks were quite nice they had lots of nice drink stalls um it was a lovely beautiful hot day which was great um so I, yeah it was like mixed reviews on different things but I just I'm not convinced that I would bother going next year didn't feel like it was worth the effort. I feel like if you went into town, you'd get better food, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't know, that's really negative. Did any of you go this year? Let me know what you thought if you did go. Um, but I like to give fair reviews because I know that obviously some of you watching are very interested in Cornwall. So if you are interested in Cornwall and I give these reviews, maybe it can tell you what's worth going to and what's not. I think that if you're in St Ives, go to the restaurants in St Ives because they're amazing. Um, and I think, yeah, Porth Eleven Food Festival, from my memory, was a lot better.
I actually, ha having thought about it, I think the last time that we went to the St. Ives Food Festival, I think we felt the same. But maybe if you aren't vegan, actually it'd be great. I don't know. Because some of the other guys there, they had some really yummy food and they said they really liked the food. So maybe it was just the vegan stuff that wasn't so good. So who knows? I'm gonna put these headphones on though and get tidying. Mm -hmm. is sufficiently hyper this is the the four or five o'clock zoomies that she always gets because she knows that dinner is um no you didn't hear that word but she does get the sense that that's on the way soon thank you bob to be honest with you since i finished the kitchen tidying up i've been lying watching tiktok which I don't like doing very much because it does waste your life and doing it for like 15 minutes is fine but when you only get like in a you get a vortex and I find for me it always happens it's more likely to happen or those kinds of addictive things are more likely to happen to me pre-period um I get PMS a week before my period um almost to the point that if I start feeling funny, I'm like, I know my period is literally a week from today. And I felt funny today and in really like foul mood. And I looked at my clue app and it said seven days to your next period. So I, at least I'm in tune with my body and I have the exact same thing with when I'm ovulating, like a day or two before I ovulate, I notice that I am kind of tired and feel a bit moody. So it's like PMS for me lasts maybe like three or four days before my period. Whereas like if I have, if I'm ovulating, it's like a day or so. Let me know if you've got any similar senses with your body. But um, I'm just not in the mood. And even going out in the garden, like a couple days ago, all I wanted to do was spend my time in the garden. I was like trying to find ways I could fit it in my day outside of work. And today I'm just like, I don't want to do anything. But I want to do everything. 
it really just like my brain is not the same it is just it just is not in normal action. So I find what helps when I feel this way is either to just be like, do you know what? This is a day of rest, it is Sunday. So chill out. But sometimes I know myself and if my brain is a little bit overactive, which it is today in terms of ruminating or thinking things, I know that sitting here isn't going to probably make me feel great. Whereas if I go outside, what time is it? It's four o'clock. If I go outside until five, I can, do the things that I wanted to do that will make me feel positive because I did them because I don't know if I'll have time tomorrow and then I'm going to come inside and read my book and make dinner and have a bath and all those sorts of things and that'll feel really nice so that's the plan so I'm going to go and I think what I need to do outside is and Alex is going outside too so I can join him is put the put the mesh things out and do a bit of a little bit of weeding because I've done all the planting so that's quite nice I did want to trim the trees but um, I don't feel like, I don't feel, I know it sounds ridiculous, I don't feel capable necessarily. So um, now I've actually, did I say it? it's taken me this long to get my SIM card? I've only just got my SIM card today and it's been a week, a week since, no, over a week since eight, so nine days since my phone got stolen. Um, so I'm going to text the gardeners, the landscape guys about them whether they offer like hedge trimming services because we have got a lot of trees a lot of hedges and they're all getting very overgrown so if they can't do it then i'll try and research um to find someone in cornwall who can come and just trim all the hedges on the outside of the property because it's also on the road they just need to be trimmed and i just feel like i would worry about doing it wrong you know i don't know anyway let's get out to the garden Look at this lovely wildflower lawn. So we try and leave this um, for no mow May. We mow, well we're not going to mow the top basically. Um, we're going to mow as little as we can. We might need to mow a path, but I think we should just give, go all in for no mow May, don't you? Apart from a path. Because we need to mow this just because of accessing it and the law line but here you can see all the daisies popping up and because we didn't mow this last year this year there's so many more daisies and flowers there was nowhere near this many last year look at all the are they forget-me-nots and buttercups and daisies and um it just looks so pretty alex is fixing the trellis that got torn down in the wind in the storms so hopefully that's fixable but I want to swap these covers with these ones because I think they work better they give them more room to grow I can literally see the slug lines the little devils <laughs> Bobby no you can't go away You've got to stay here. You hear that gun? You don't want to be in the fire and run about. Come hang out with mummy. Okay? Stay. To the gardening of me. Yeah? Oh, I feel like these have been eaten more. I don't get it. How are they getting in? I feel like look, these are also being eaten. I don't understand how they're getting in. Look. All of these have been eaten. And I do not get how. But look. The big beastie boy. happened goodness sake look this is help me a sec oh you can't <laughs> I'm even getting really frustrated about this and it's not even something that's frustrating 
Why is it so... Oh my, Alex. Is it okay if you just help me just for one minute? Because I've got this tangled and I can't do it with two hands. I need someone to hold it whilst I figure this out. My brain can't compute. Look, it's so like twisted. It's all right, maybe it's upside down if you pull those out. But then this one fell out. Oh. I don't know exactly. I'm getting all really wound up. I think it can loop back on itself, it's so big. These seem to be bigger than the other ones. Um, they're all the same. Are they? Yeah. Do you reckon that's right? Yeah. That's good. This one's going to be huge. Huh? Do we look how much it's been eaten? Yeah. Was yeah. it always like that? Look, there's, I mean, how many leaves? One, two, three, four, five, six. I really wouldn't recommend these things. I actually despise them because they're plastic, they, they're too big, they're not very good quality. You have to use a hundred tent pegs to secure them down. Look, we have sugar snap peas. Look at how many there are. I think I've overplanted. I think that's the look at the spinach. Yeah, it's going to be a lot. <laughs> I think that's the th look at that. That is like individual spinach plants. What do I do about that? I haven't got. I guess I'm going to have to separate them and try and make space. But all of these are sugar snap peas. I can that, see them. Yeah. That is a lot. He. <laughs> I yeah. think that I said this yesterday, that's the biggest error I've made, the rookie error I've made, is that we're going to have so much produce in one go. I don't like any of the veg you planted, so yes, you're going to have to do. eat it all. You love sugar snap peas. I like onions, I don't like sugar snap peas. What planet are you on that you don't like? Alex, I'm sorry, but I like you sugar. don't like any vegetables. I like snap. Can you, let, can you name a vegetable you like? Potato. That's, that doesn't count. That's mm. like starchy vegetable. Strawberry. That's a fruit. No, it's not. It is. No, technically it's not. Okay, well, what vegetable do you like that's actually a vegetable? <sighs> uh, carrot? Is that a vegetable? You like carrots? Yeah, they're okay. That would be your choice. That's my least yeah. favourite vegetable alongside beetroot. Or like... I don't know. Seitan? Sorry, can you actually name a vegetable? Tofu. I love tofu. That's can more of a legume. Can you name a vegetable that you like? Mm, rice. Does that count? Alex. I love nice white rice. Did you actually? With a bit of soy sauce. Try. Hmm. Uh, n you name vegetables and I can say if I like them. Well, sugar snap peas. They're fine. Spinach. Meh. Carrots. The, yeah, sure. Rhubarb. Potatoes. Pak choy. Yeah. Brussels sprouts. Broccoli. <laughs> no way. I don't understand. How are you vegan? I don't know. Alex, but what about all this stuff we've just planted? <laughs> this is you, you chose it. But I'd have planted soybeans. Plant? Soybeans and rice. Soybeans? Yeah. You can't plant, I mean, we don't think we've got the right rice. I was going to make rice. a rice paddy at the bottom of the garden. By the river. I can't believe how much that, that's grown, even though I bloody stringed it like a week ago. Oh, wow. Yes. That's the trouble. You kind of just have to embrace the meadow look. But that's not meadow, that's um... No, I know, but... If you, uh, what's it? Stinging nettles and brown. Yeah, if we chuck some flowers in there, some flower seeds, maybe. I actually would like, alongside peas, next year to bar to plant loads of beans. I would love to learn... I mean, this don't think it's... Like, growing... Can you... Like, how difficult is it to grow, like you said, soybeans? I don't know. I don't know if there's a different climate needed. That's what I'm wondering. You grow baked beans. I like those. Haricot beans? No. Baked. But like, can you? Is it easy to grow those sorts of things? I've grown a lot of brassicas. That's the only thing. Mm. But it's all a bit of trial and error. This is not an example of like how to do it. This is me. I picked stuff up at the garden centre that yeah. was plantable <laughs> at that time and just planted it. I think next year I just buy it in the shop. Also, you, I've done it mainly by myself. Yeah. Next year maybe you could help me. Yeah, I do the inside stuff, like the laundry. <laughs> I was about to say, I thought you were saying that you do the inside stuff that is in the plants inside. It's like you've never once watered the plants inside. I did. I did once. What about the ones in the garage? That's too far away. 
<laughs> There's no tap. Oh, yeah. So, dinner tonight is... Yeah. This is a chicken Sri Lankan inspired curry. I've got all the ingredients. This is how it comes with Green Chef. It makes it very easy. So we've got this isn't chicken, green beans, basmati rice, coconut milk, and then all the spices um, just laid out and ready with the stock and everything. And we're going to get cooking in a second. <laughs> Here it is. That was rapid. That was, I think, maybe 20 minutes or 25 minutes. And it smells really good. I think the benefit of Green Chef is they've got all the so the sauces and spices pre-done, so it kind of takes out some time. Let's give it a try. It's gonna make me want to grow green beans. Don't burn your mouth. Mmm. What does that remind me of? I can't think what that reminds me of, but I've, it tastes something similar. Maybe when you eat it, you can tell me. Sorry, that's not interesting at all. It's delicious. It was rapid. I've done most of the washing up. Very convenient. Very happy with that. Like I mentioned at the start, I do have a discount code with Green Chef, which will be on screen as well as what it gets you. So you'll get a reduction on the first box and then follow up boxes. But like I said, the code does change and the kind of deal changes because I work with them all the time because I absolutely love them. And we are genuine customers outside of any like job we do with Green Chef we also order Green Chef because we just love it because it's so convenient this week I was just like I don't want to have to think about meal prepping sometimes you don't have to think about that and it's meant this week we've not had to do a food shop we've got stuff from last week I'm gonna make that soup tomorrow and then Alex is gonna make some bread and we've got plenty of things in the cupboard because we've got Green Chef as well so it just it just makes your life so much easier and the portion sizing I just absolutely love it and I can't imagine not ever using it if you love to cook mm. <laughs> 